Welcome students. So, we were talking about the ratio analysis and we learned that how to calculate different types of the ratios and we discussed uh, uh, something about the three set of ratios that is uh, return on investment ratios. Then we talked about the uh, solvency ratios and then we uh, talked about the liquidity ratios. So, three sets of ratios we talked about and uh, ROI was the first set which we uh, discussed that how to calculate the return on investment. And as I told you that this is a broader concept as compared to the simple profitability. Profitability ratios I will be talking later on and uh, till now what we discussed that is the ROI ratios and then the uh, solvency ratios and then the liquidity ratios. We will first calculate these ratios, we, miss, we will discuss a case of uh, one existing uh, firm that is Gresim Industries Limited. And Gresim Industries is a firm which is uh, uh, working in the textile sector and uh, that is a really uh, very good performing firm and uh, we will discuss this case and what we have discussed so far about the ratios that is the three sets of ratios. We will calculate these three sets of ratios for the Gresim Industries and then we will proceed further knowing about the other ratios. So, that you get to know that how to calculate these ratios and uh, how to interpret the ratios. So, more important is not simply the calculating the figures anybody can do it or even the systems do it for us these days. Uh, and even there are some standard databases as I talked to you about the Provis Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. If you look at their, uh, if you look at their database that is Provis that is having uh, say financial statements of more than 11,500 companies and uh, uh, most of the part of the these financial statements is analyzed also and they have already calculated the ratios. So, it is not the question of calculating the ratios and the values, values and ratios anybody can calculate, they can be easily calculated, uh, but interpretation is the most important thing. As a financial analyst, we should be knowing that how to interpret those values, what is the meaning of those values and how to draw the meaningful inferences about that, that is the really the, the int intelligent part as far as the financial statements are concerned. So, uh, in this part we will be learning how to calculate different sets of ratios and then we will interpret those ratios and once we complete that calculation and uh, interpretation of the three sets of ratios discussed so far that is return on investment ratios, solvency ratios and liquidity ratios. We will proceed further to learn about the other four sets of ratios, but first we will talk about the Gresim Industries, we will ana analyze the financial statements of Gresim Industries Limited. So, if you look at this, you know that you must have heard about the name of this company that is a textile unit, textile company working in the textile sector. And if you look at the balance sheet of this company, it is really a wonderful balance sheet, it is really a very interesting balance sheet and uh, if you look at the ROI, we, many people will calculate you will really want be wondering that really having a very good return on investment, the solvency is also very good and they are maintaining a quite good amount of the liquidity also. So, in this part we are going to learn about the Gresham Industries. So, look at this case say Gresham Industries whose balance sheet is given to us as on 31st March 2007 and if you look at the important parts here. If you look at the important things here, you will see that uh, it is a very good balance sheet because uh, solvency structure of the firm is really very good, very, very strong firm it is. And if you look at this, you see that uh, they are running the show largely from uh, uh, say <coughs> internal funds and internal funds, they invested initially a share capital of 91.69 uh, crores and if you uh, uh, say look at the, the, the return on investment may be the profit they have earned and reinvested back in the business. Now, the larger expansion of the firm has been done on the basis of this uh, internal funds. And you look at this uh, in reserve and surplus figure which is 6138.35 crores and which was uh, 4890.39 crores previous year. So, you see that how much profit has been added here and the capital has appreciated from the about 5000 crores to the 6000 crores. So, it is a very good appreciation in one year as compared to the previous year. 
And when you talk about the loan funds, so uh, the loan component is very, very less here. They have secured loans of 2291 crores, uh, which was 1386.12 crores uh, in the previous year. So, they have gone up by about say 1000 crores and unsecured loans are 660 crores, which was 593.55 crores in the previous year. So, the loans have also gone up, but not to that extent as it should have been. Uh, in, in the real sense, as I talked to you, talked to you in my previous lectures that the debt equity ratio of the firm which is at the acceptable level is 2 is to 1. So, if you look at the debt equity ratio here, it is I think it is reverse, it is 1 third is to 1, 0.33 is to 1 if you look at the total quantum of the loans which is about say 3000 crores and if you look at the uh, share capital which is appreciation plus the initial share capital and that is more than 6000 crores. So, they have share capital internal funds more than the external funds it means uh, the intention of the management intention of the initial promoters is very clear that they want to grow with the firm, they want to work hard, they want to really expand this firm and they are largely depending upon the uh, say internal funds and they are making use of the external funds also, but maybe half of the uh, external funds, half of the internal funds. So, this is the credibility of the firm, this is the solvency of the firm and if you look at here the you calculate any solvency ratios, maybe it is NAV or it is debt equity ratio or it is a interest coverage ratio or the say uh, debt service coverage ratio, all the ratios are really very good or will be very good when we will be calculating and they have really a very good uh, say structure of their uh, finances or the sources of the funds they are generating. Now, here come to the lower part here if you look at the assets they are justifying their total investment and they have the gross block of assets that is 6770 crores and then the after depreciation it is a, a half that is 3390.44 crores in the 2007 and it has uh, uh, come down because of the depreciation. Then they have some capital work in progress and then you talk about the other things they have got quite a good amount of investments also which they have made uh, outside the firm and then they have uh, say if you look at the other incomes also they are say about say uh, 70 lakhs 0 0.70 crores and similarly the other assets. If you talk about the current liabilities, then the current liabilities are also really good, means current liabilities are largely the part of spontaneous finance that is the suppliers credit, bills payable and then some expense credits. So, they have also been able to generate sufficient amount from the spontaneous sources also. So, they are making proper use of all the three sources long term funds, largely the long term funds are from the internal sources that is share capital plus reserves and surplus and uh, they have made the use of external long term sources, but uh, half of the say internal investment and then they have uh, made use of the short term funds also and then the uh, spontaneous finance also because current liabilities amount is very, very high here. Then we talk about the this is the profit and loss account of the Grassim Industries and if you look at the total income here that is in terms of sales that is about say 9607 about say 10,000 crores more than 9500 crores which has significantly gone up from the previous year and if you look at the net sales here that is also quite a good amount that is after the excise duty because the excise duty goes to the government. So, that is not the firm's income. So, after say subtracting this excise duty from the gross sales the net sales left are very good handsome amount that is more than 8500 crores and uh, then they have some other incomes also they have made investment as we have seen the investment figure in the asset side of the balance sheet. So, because of the investments they are earning the good amount of interest that is 113.27 crores which has grown up significantly from the previous year and they have uh, say uh, given some loans also. So, they are getting both the incomes interest and dividend incomes. Then we have here the other incomes are also quite good and then they have say uh, been using the stock also whatever the stock was there with them maybe of any kind raw material work in process or the finished goods they have also been able to reduce that stock also. So, it means they are selling the quite good amount of the uh, say uh, production in the market and here it is the lower part which is talking about the cost part for generating these sales larger chunk of the cost is for the say material then is the manufacturing expenses and then they have purchased some finished goods as also 
without uh, say any further processing they are selling that in the market. And then there are the other expenses like selling and distribution expenses. Yes, they have borrowed money that is 111 uh, crores of the interest or almost 112 crores of interest they are paying. So, it means they have the loans about 3000 crores of the loans are there. So, on that they are paying the interest, but the interest is also at the very uh, manageable level and then there is the amortization of amount and depreciation and amortization. Then we have the if you look at here the profit of the firm which is really very very interesting figure if you profit before tax here is that is 2000 plus crores which was 1200 crores earlier in the previous year. This year the profit has increased by 1000 crores you can say from the 1200 crores to the 2226.36 crores. So, there is a very good increase almost uh, profit has gone up by uh, say 100 percent almost 100 percent as compared to the previous year. So, that is again a very very good achievement and then they have uh, say a profit after tax and the profit after tax figure is also a very good figure which was 6 863 crores previous year and now this year it has gone up to 1535.81 crores. So, it means a double of the uh, again the net profit also has become double that is a profit after tax and then they have uh, talked about the other uh, components uh, there in the profit and loss account <coughs> and they have uh, say uh, created some reserves and some dividends they have paid. So, interim dividend they have paid, they have proposed the final dividend also and then they are talking about the tax part and look at the general reserve figure. General reserve figure has also become double this year, 600 crores of the general reserve that is the reserve and surplus work there for any uh, contingency or any future unspecified purpose and this general reserve has become 1200 crores almost gone double not almost but yes it has gone double here 1200 crores 1200 crores of the reserves they have created and then they have taken the balance sheet which means the, the profit to be taken to the balance sheet is also quite a good amount close to 1000 crores. So, it means if you look at the overall financial position of this firm and the profitability of this firm even without any kind of analysis if you look, look at the even, even the, the raw balance sheet without any kind of analysis, without ratio analysis, without preparing cash flow statement or anything, you will be able to find it out that this is the very good uh, firm having a very good financial structure and having a very good uh, say uh, financial position also. Uh, Let us talk about one more figure here that is we talk about the uh, cash and bank balances. Cash and bank balances has this was about 1 uh, which, which was 150 crores previous year this figure has uh, come down they have reduced the cash level to 116 crores. It means this is a good uh, development because firms should not keep large amount of the cash and the current assets. They should uh, uh, keep a nominal means a pro optimum amount of the current assets because as I told you cash in hand or cash at bank does not earn anything for the firms. It is only uh, kept for meeting day to day expenses. So, if you keep large amount of the cash in that case it is not going to serve a good purpose means any purpose and it is going to cause us the cost. So, the cash should be kept as uh, optimum as possible so that it is sufficient for making the payment firm is not making any default in making the payment is not technically insolvent and they are fulfilling all the requirements and they are not losing any income also by keeping extra amount of the cash. So, if you look at the total sales level which is uh, uh, a total uh, quite a good means total assets level if you look at which is about say 9000 crores of the assets and out of that they are keeping only 10 percent if you say roughly 10 percent they are keeping as cash which is a very optimum amount and uh, they are means uh, 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 we can expect that they are maintaining the quite a good amount of the liquidity also not more not less. So, it is the optimum amount of the liquidity they are maintaining and uh, they will be able to let us say use this liquidity for paying their short term uh, liabilities, current liabilities. Apart from their balance sheet and profit and loss account, we find here that the firm has some extra information also. This industry, this firm has say a share capital of, so if you look at this is 9 crore 16 lakhs 89,485 equity shares and uh, one share is of the 10 rupees. So, and they are fully paid. Tax rate is 35 percent. And then the share capital on uh, as on 31st March 
2005 was the same as in the succeeding year, which means they have not issued any new shares in the market. They have been running the show with the initial amount of the shares, share capital that is 91.69 crores. And uh, if you talk about the reserve and surplus figure, so reserve and surplus figure was 4236 and currently if you look at the reserve and surplus, then this figure is really uh, very good. Reserve and surplus they have risen up to the level of uh, uh, if you look at this figure of the current year that is 6000 crores. So, uh, uh, quite a good amount of increase in the reserve and surplus and as you know that reserve and surpluses are created from the profits. So, if you are earning the profits after paying all the say creating specific reserves, paying the dividend and uh, means making all kind of the provisions, we have amount to be uh, passed on to the reserve and surplus and which was uh, 4236 crores or 37 crores in 2005. In 2007 it has become about 6000 crores. So, it means it is a quite increase, good increase in the reserve and surplus also. And here we have to, uh, if you look at this information, then you see that we have uh, certain other items also. And if you look at the other items, then uh, uh, these items are like, uh, uh, you see uh, we have uh, uh, this is the uh, figure of secured loans. So, secured loans include a short term debt of 331.20 crores and uh, 198. So, it is a short term. Short term information is not given to us in the balance sheet, it is only given as the secured loans. So, in that uh, secured loans, uh, so we are talking about this analysis of the balance sheet and the information given here. So, if you look at the uh, figure of uh, so, we are talking about this uh, balance sheet and uh, it is better to understand the balance sheet thoroughly before starting calculating the uh, ratios. It is very important because if you start calculating the ratios and if you have not uh, looked at the total information uh, first what is given to us in the statements, then sometimes we can miss out some information and we may not be able to calculate the all the all the ratios properly. So, that is why I am explaining it to you that because it gives you an idea also that what kind of the balance sheet it is, what kind of the uh, financial statements are these and if you look at even uh, say even the naked or with the naked eyes also your uh, balance sheets and your uh, say profit and loss account you can easily make out that uh, how the overall financial position of the company. So, it means uh, in case of the Grassim industries if you look at the <coughs> overall financial statements of the company uh, you will be able to make out or uh, take a decision that without even any kind of analysis uh, this company is a very good firm, very good organization. And similarly if you talk ab about here, we were talking about the figures of uh, say um, you could call it as uh, uh, different types of the loans and the part of uh, your uh, uh, figures given in the secured loans. So, if you talk about the figures given in the secured loans here, secured loans have short term debt of 331.20 crores out of the total debt of the 3000 crores and out of the total unsecured debt of uh, about 600 crores 75.51 crores in 2007 is on account of the short term debt. So, short term debt is basically the current liability. So, we will have to add it up in the current liabilities while calculating the liquidity ratios. So, there you will be given directly you are given the current liabilities and in the current liabilities you have to add the short term debt and then total will be the of these two will become the denominator for calculating the liquidity ratios. So, we should be very clear and one more important thing is you need this information of the long term and short term debt for calculating the interest coverage ratio and then the debt service coverage ratio. So, uh, interest coverage ratio as we have seen in the numerator that is a profit after tax then we take the uh, non cash charges and then we take the interest on the long term loans. So, if you know because interest figure may be, may, may be uh, it has been given as a total figure of the interest. So, how much is the interest on the short term debt, how much is the interest on the long term debt, we will have to calculate for that and for calculating the interest coverage ratio and the debt service coverage ratio, we will have to take only the interest on the long term debt, we will not have to take the interest on the short term debt. So, interest component we have to know and for that it is very important to know the uh, extent of or the magnitude of the long term and the short term loans. So, that is why I was discussing with you. Then we have the uh, say in other items like your uh, working capital, all short term debt represents 
working capital borrowings all short term debt represents working capital borrowings and then we have the say long term debt is uh, 182.27 crores was redeemed during the year it was redeemed means it may it was paid back it was returned by the company during the year so look at that how much uh, uh, surplus they have how much profits they have they are able to pay a quite a good amount of the say interest uh, out of the profits and interest payment is only possible if you have the liquidity if you have the good amount of the profits you have the sufficient cash available liquid amount of the cash available then only the interest can be paid so and the loan and, and then the, the loan part can be paid so here if you look at the long term debt long term debt 182.27 crores has been paid back and then we talk about the other incomes that include operating income of 40.24 crores and 30.33 crores which was in the two years this and then the we have the some other important information about the uh, say uh, uh, say uh, uh, market price of the share of the company you see that closing market price of the share as on 31st march 2007 was 2091 rupees and as on 2006 it was 2057.95 rupees it means as compared to 2006 in 2007 the share price market value of the share of the company has gone up it has not been remaining static it has gone up and when it has increased means you see what is the price of the share of the company if you talk about the book value of the shares of the company the book value of the shares is how much rupees 10 per share rupees 10 per share is the book value of the company and a 10 rupees share which was originally issued by the company long back it has now the market value of 2000 plus crores uh, sorry uh, 2000 rupees more than 2000 rupees it means there is a good appreciation and everybody would like to buy the shares of this kind of the companies because they can expect a very good increase that if you buy the shares of Gresim industries uh, today and you sell it after uh, some days you will be able to get uh, a good return on that there is nothing going to be uh, say uh, any kind of a loss making situation it is a profit making situation but a point of caution here is that it is not that blindfully you buy the shares of this kind of the companies because the appreciation which has to be there in the share it has already gone up to the saturation level now further more increase uh, is not um, you should not expect much more increase in the share price of this company because if you look at the uh, the uh, previous year's price that was uh, 20 uh, sorry 2057.95 means 2058 rupees and now it has become 2091 rupees so how much increase is there about 33 rupees increase is there the share price has increased as compared to previous year this year the share price has gone up by 33 rupees because the reason is the company is very good they are earning very good profits their performance is also very good but the it has go already gone up to a level which you call it as it is a saturated level of the saturation you can uh, say uh, if you draw a line you can say that normally the share price sometimes uh, uh, say is, is moving like this and then it goes up started going up and then it reaches at the saturation level so when it is reaching at the saturation level it means you cannot expect so it is going up also in case of the grass industries the share price is going up it's increasing but not at a very faster rate so only 33 uh, uh, rupees increase we have seen in the current year so it, it was maybe in the beginning it was going like this now it is something like this and it is moving like this so not a very good increase is there so ups and downs some increases are there and but finally at the end of the year it has shown the increase by 33 rupees so we are not going to make any loss making investment if we buy the shares of this kind of companies it can be bought and if you look at the same time the uh, sensex value on these dates 31st march the sensex was 13000 at the 13072 rupees which has also gone up as compared to 2006 so the growth is also and you see one more important thing here is that in between uh, the share of this company had reached up to 2778 also or 79 also in january 2007 
So it means if somebody has bought the shares and if you wanted to sell, January would have been the better month that if you do not keep on waiting till March, if you sell it off in January, you are earning a good amount because you are buying, you have that share you bought in 2006 for 2000, uh, 2000 2000 rupees, 2015. 2057 rupees or 58 rupees and now in uh, at one point of time in January it has risen up to 2778 or 79 rupees. So, if somebody had sold these shares in the market in January he would have earned a good amount of return or a good amount of the say uh, return on his investment. So, finally if you look at the overall performance of the company is really without even calculating any kind of the ratios you can make out that yes this company is a very good organization is very nicely managed company properly managed company and uh, without even any kind of the ratios you will be able to find out that uh, it seems to be that their overall financial position is very good, their profitability is very good, their share price is going up and they are creating huge amount of the reserves also, they are paying quite a good amount of dividend to their shareholders also. So, overall a very good company, very well managed company and whatever the investment maybe as a shareholder I make, as a lender I uh, give funds or anybody gives funds to this company or as a supplier somebody gives the material to this company, he is not going to make any loss making proposition, he is going to deal with a very good firm, very good organization and no loss only gain and it is a win-win situation for all the stakeholders. <coughs> now we will be after this we will start uh, calculating the ratios, why I picked up this kind of the case because it is really good to uh, make analysis of the companies who are uh, itself showing a very good financial position and we want to confirm that the financial position which we are finding out from the raw financial statements without any kind of analysis is the same thing is coming out while we are making the analysis or there is some different because financial analysis adds some value as far as the firm's overall information is concerned and then we want to make sure that yes what has seen here with the naked eyes or maybe as a raw balance sheet on the profit and loss account same thing you will find when you will calculate the relevant ratios for the aggressive industries and you can uh, say substantiate your observations about the company with the ratios which we are calculating and with the help of the ratios we can convince the shareholders, we can convince the bankers, we can convince the other financial institutions and we can convince the suppliers. So, uh, now next part will be that is we will start calculating the ratios, three sets of ratios that is the uh, ROI ratios, then na this uh, uh, solvency ratios and the liquidity ratios for the aggressive industries and that I will start doing in the next part of discussion. Thank you very much.